For the next 100 days, I have to catch a shiny Pokemon every single day. From Kanto to Kitakami, we'll be hunting all across the board. And it's without a doubt the craziest challenge I've ever attempted. Oh, and not to mention, for each day I fail to catch a shiny, I'll have to surprise trade away an entire box of my shinies. So for day one, I decided to go for an absolute banger and one that never disappoints. <gasps> yes, there he is, Shiny Claw! It took us around an hour and 40 minutes to find, and we're now 1% through the challenge. So over the next 100 days, I'm allowed to get Shinies from literally any Pokemon game. But to prevent me from only playing the ones where Shinies are easy, I've come up with three special goals. The first one being that I need to catch a Shiny in at least 10 different Pokemon games. And failing to complete this goal will mean I have to trade away 10 Shinies to my subscribers, for however many games below 10 I tick off. The other two goals will be expensive explained shortly, and seeing as I've got a hundred days to worry about them, I decided to focus most of the first week on shinies I still didn't have in Pokemon Violet. Day 2 started off with a beautiful yellow Gumi that I'm surprised I've never hunted before, and the same thing could be said about Bounce Wee on Day 3. Now a lot of you probably know about the Applin AFK shiny farm, and well, it actually works on this little Magastine too. Such a fantastic shiny. Then over the next two days came two blue shinies, with the first one being a Zangoose, and the second one being a Houndour, who could be found right at the beginning of the game. This may seem like easy work to begin with, but believe me, forcing yourself to have to take an unknown amount of time out of your day to guarantee you find a shiny that day is a really hard and scary process. I don't know how long it's gonna take, I'm already constantly hunting, planning and editing other shiny hunting challenges, and I've also got my personal life to work around, which you'll definitely see later on, seeing as I go on holiday to Singapore at some point. Pichu was my next target, and you'll probably know he's an absolute pain to hunt due to how slightly he changes. <gasps> That's the shiny, right? Oh yeah it is, let's go! Thankfully it only took 30 minutes to find. Then on day 7, we moved on to a different game, Pokemon Go. And that's because it was actually Squirtle Community Day. So basically, Community Days are like monthly events that go on for 3 hours, spawning an abundance of a specific Pokemon. And what makes it fun is the fact that the shiny rates are boosted to only 1 in 20. That is incredibly good, and throughout the event I scored a wild shiny Blastoise, and even a Squirtle Squad shiny which I was dying to get. I'm a diehard hard Pokemon Go fan, so you'll be seeing quite a few shinies from this game. Taking a break from Scarlet and Violet for a while, I moved on to Legends Arceus for most of week 2, and started off by finding a really cool shiny I didn't have yet, Abra. He's notorious for being really annoying to hunt in this game, because as soon as he notices you, he'll teleport away, and if you didn't save before that, you lose the shiny. Thankfully I played it really carefully and was able to finally add him to my collection. And on the topic of Legends Arceus, my second goal for this video is to get 3 shiny alpha Pokemon. Pokemon, which again, like having to hunt in 10 unique Pokemon games, failing to complete this goal will cost me a bunch of shinies to trade to my subscribers. And there's still one more goal I haven't even explained yet. More on that soon. Now day 9 was actually pretty cool because during a walk around this little waterfall in WA, I ended up finding a shiny Galarian Ponyta in Pokemon Go. This one looks so cool and it really caught me by surprise, I was not expecting it at all. Day 10 consisted on finding a blue Curlia, which is always welcome due to my love for the Rolts shiny family. But day 11 turned completely 180 and went absolutely horribly. Okay, so first off, I found a shiny Hisuian Basculin in the water. And little did I know, he runs away as soon as he notices you. So because I didn't save, we had our first shiny fail. Which if you're a regular here, you'll know it's a common occurrence in Jaden Wilson shiny hunting videos. But what came next, I will never forgive my stupidity for. Oh my god, what? Shiny Alpha Magma? No way, that is awesome. Oh my god, a Shiny Alpha Magma? How could I possibly mess this up? <sighs> well, how about one, forgetting to save the game due to my excitement, and two, one hit KOing it because I thought it could take the move. <gasps> no, it killed! I thought he could take it. Oh, I didn't even save, did I? Oh my god, I didn't. It doesn't have the Iceland background. No! Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Yeah, this is one of my lowest lows in shiny hunting. And no, this doesn't even count towards my three shiny alpha challenge, seeing as we didn't even catch it. But hey, at least we found a shiny Electabuzz later on. Yay. Anyways, moving on from that disaster, I found something pretty cool the next day. That being a beautiful red Skaroopy. And then I got a shiny in Pokemon Go I've wanted for a really long time now. Spinder, who actually came out of a research task when I went out for dinner 
dinner one night. All right, to end off this week, I moved on to our fourth game to shiny hunt in, Pokemon Sword. And not only that, I'll be revealing the final goal for this video, and that will be to catch a shiny legendary Pokemon. Outside of Pokemon Go, that is, because it's really easy to get them in that game. And to do that, we're using Dynamax Adventures. For those unaware, here's a quick summary of what that means. Basically, we talk to this lady, she gives us a Pokemon to borrow, we use it on this gauntlet of Dynamax raids, and we need to get through three regular Pokemon to face off against a random legendary Pokemon. And after we beat each raid, we're allowed to catch that Pokemon. And once the adventure is over, we can check if they're shiny. The rate with the shiny charm is 1 in 100. So after completing a full Dynamax adventure, there's a 1 in 25 chance that one of the four Pokemon will be shiny. Now, yes, those rates are really good, but the adventures take around 10 to 15 minutes each. So it's a very lengthy process. But that's how we'd be getting our shiny legendary for this challenge. For now, I didn't exactly know who I wanted to hunt, but that'd be established later on. Our first shiny actually came really quickly and was this Crustle who I've never had shiny in any game before. And it was only after 30 raids. The next day, our luck was literally identical because after another 30 raids, we got this awesome shiny Nido King. And I'm gonna need someone to do the maths on this luck because just watch this. What? That's a shiny beware. <laughs> that was literally my first Dynamax adventure for the day. That is ridiculous. Now we're gonna be taking a break from Sword and Shield for quite a while, but when we come back, the pain will begin. Day 17, I woke up to an amazing sight, seeing as Pokemon Sleep just recently released early in Australia, and I managed to find my first shiny. This one being a pseudo Wudo, and I actually lost my mind and was so hyped about this one, because finding your first shiny in any Pokemon game will always be so memorable, and we didn't even even know the shiny rates at this time. For probably the many of you who haven't even heard of Pokemon Sleep, basically your phone or Pokeball Plus Plus device will track how long you sleep for. And based on how much you move in your sleep and how much sleep you actually get, the game will give you specific Pokemon based on that data. And as you can probably tell by now, there's shiny Pokemon. The next day, I actually found a really subtle shiny in Pokemon Go whilst I was walking to work, and that would be a Purloin. And although I'm not usually crazy about the subtle shinies, this one I actually really like. I then felt like going back to Violet for a day to work on my shiny decks and hunted for a starly. Wait. I don't have one yet? How? With how many I get in Legends Arceus, it really came to a surprise that I didn't have one in this game yet. And well, it wasn't too long before returning to Pokemon Sleep because I managed to get my second shiny extremely quickly. This one being an Ekans, which is super cool. I actually cannot believe my luck. This game just came out. We were now a fifth through the challenge and here's a look at what we've found so far. A pretty awesome haul and we hadn't gone a day without finding a shiny yet, thankfully. We've also hunted in five out of 10 unique games, caught zero of three shiny alpha Pokemon and no legendary shinies yet. We'll be doing these updates every 20 days to keep track of progress. Now day 21 was actually pretty funny because it was Squirtle Community Day again. Apparently lots of people were struggling to log in during the original event so they ended up doing a second makeup day and I mean I'm happy considering I scored a second Squirtle Squad Squad... <laughs> <laughs> Considering I scored a second Squirtle Squad shiny. There we go. Which I absolutely love. Moving into yet another new Pokemon game, I really felt like shiny hunting in Pokemon Quest. This game is actually really cool and underrated. It's basically a very simple dungeon crawler in this voxel art style. And you guessed it, there's shiny Pokemon. Basically, the way to hunt in this game is to fill up your pots in the hub world with ingredients. And then after a certain amount of expeditions, the dish will be ready and attract new Pokemon. However, you don't actually have to complete any levels or anything. You could just enter a dungeon, leave instantly, and that'll add a point to the cooking pots. Basically, when the pots are ready, you open them up, and anywhere between one to three Pokemon will spawn. And there's a chance they're shiny. Only one in 51 odds according to Cerebi, which is really good. After around three and a half hours of repeating this process, and at 101 encounters, we found our first boxy shiny. <gasps> yes! Shiny Geodude! Oh, that looks so cool in this game. I love that. It was a very switch your brain off type of hunt, so I decided to do it again tomorrow, and it actually took 4 hours to find this one. But it was another Gen 1 banger that I really love, this one being the Vibrant Orange Shelter. I then went back to Violet for a little bit, and ended up finding a shiny Lechonk whilst looking for a slack off. The next day I was able to find the Pink Sloth, and continuing with the Pink theme, we hunted for a Mareep the next day. And well, get ready for shiny fail number 3, because on the 27th day, I failed a shiny unknown due to me not saving again. Which is honestly so dumb. I 
I don't know why I just choose not to save sometimes. It's it's not that hard. But we did manage to catch an adorable Celio later that day. And now say hello to Shiny Poliwag because it's time for another community day. This is a pretty cool one seeing as there's four shinies I can add to my Go collection. And something really awesome happened because I managed to find a huge Shiny Poliwag. They somewhat recently added huge and tiny effects onto Pokemon and getting one shiny is such a cool flex. Moving on to yet another new Pokemon game, I booted up Let's Go Pikachu for the first time in almost five years. How is this game that old? Now, I've never shiny hunted in this game before, but it's actually pretty simple and quite fun. Basically, you target a Pokemon you want to hunt. In this case, I chose Ponyta because his shiny is absolutely goaded. And all you got to do is keep catching them. Basically, the game keeps track of your catch combo. And once you've got a combo of 31 or higher, the next spawn of that Pokemon has a 1 in 315 chance of being shiny with a lure on. And that's without the shiny charm, which I don't even have. So basically, I just keep catching Ponyta, and if the next spawn isn't shiny, I then catch that one to keep the shiny odds the best they can be. Unfortunately, the motion controls to throw the ball can be pretty whack sometimes, and literally throw in the opposite direction my arm went. And that would occasionally lead to Ponyta running away and breaking my catch combo, which was so annoying. However, after four hours of hunting and at a catch combo of 237, I found this beautiful blue flamed horse. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my god, that looks so cool. Oh, that is awesome. Come on, game, please. No, it's throwing in the opposite direction I'm, like, aiming in real life. No, 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 please don't run away, don't run away. Thank you. Oh my god. Now, you might be wondering why I haven't been doing much Dynamax adventures. And, well, I actually have. Because over the past few days, I've been slowly doing heaps of raids. But because it's such a slow process, it wasn't until today I found my next shiny. This one being a Mulga. Not a legendary, but a pretty underrated shiny. Also, I had decided I wanted my shiny legendary to be the majestic golden ho-oh. One of the most iconic shiny legendaries out there, and I just prayed I'd be able to find it with the time remaining left in this challenge. Anyways, it was now time for me to go to Singapore to celebrate my 21st. I really wanted to find a shiny on the plane to show you guys, and I actually got one. That being this amazing blue gold pin. And after landing, I got to briefly explore the greatest airport in the world, which includes the only permanent Pokemon Center store outside of Japan. It has been a dream of mine to visit one of these since I was a little kid and I finally made it to my first one. I was in heaven. That evening we drove into Malaysia to stay a few nights and I actually woke up the next morning seeing a shiny Cubone in Pokemon Sleep. Great! I don't have to worry about finding any shinies whilst at Legoland for the day. To get it out of the way, the next morning I found a Shinx in Legends Arceus in only 5 minutes and we headed back into Singapore that evening. The next day we explored the city from the amazing Marina Bay Sands to the shops where we found this awesome Pokemon card vending machine to the night markets. And because I'd been playing a bunch of Pokemon Go in the meantime, I managed to find a shiny Oddish in the heart of Chinatown. It was absolutely perfect because I was dying to get a Go shiny, seeing as it's basically like a cool souvenir from where you caught it. Then the next day was actually my 21st birthday, and oh my god did a lot happen. Basically, we went onto these cable cars which fittingly had a Pokemon campaign going on, and we got a Pikachu themed one and then a Quaxley one on the way back. I I also got to meet Barack Obama, went up this Helix Skyline thingy, and then to one of Singapore's top tourist attractions, the Gardens by the Bay, which had this really awesome Avatar themed campaign. And at night, the gigantic man-made flowers put on this amazing light show, which was fantastic. So with all that happening, we had hit our first day where I failed to catch any shiny Pokemon. Yes, that means I'll be surprised trading away a box of shinies at the end of this video, but it was totally worth it for not taking time out of this day. The next morning we went to Universal. Universal Studios and continued exploring the city at night, and I actually managed to find another shiny in Pokemon Go. This one being Hopip. The day after we went to the Singapore Zoo and I went absolutely ham on Pokemon Go today, looking at both the animals in real life and catching them Pokemon on my phone. I managed to find a shiny Petalil which just released at the time whilst on this safari cart thingy, and on the same day we also found a shiny Paris which is awesome. It was then our final day here so I just scored a quick shiny Glam Meow in Legends Arceus, and back to the Pokemon Center I went. And oh boy, I went on an insane shopping spree. I picked up almost everything I liked the look of, and even after really, really holding myself back, I easily dropped a thousand dollars on this store alone. Here's me back home with everything I picked up in Singapore. Absolutely amazing holiday, but the shiny grind continues. Waking up the next morning came our third Pokemon Sleep shiny, Rattata. And then over in Legends, we scored a blue snow run. Here's our 20, or should I say 19 most recent shinies. 40 days down, one day 
missed, with seven unique games ticked off, and the two other challenges remain untouched. Alright, let's do a bit of a rapid fire, because there's still so much to show. Next came a Motham, followed up by Froki Community Day, which was really cool because I actually managed to find a tiny shiny. Then I instantly found a shiny Glammeow in just one minute the next day, followed up by another blue snow run, a bright lime Ursa ring, and a shiny C dot in Pokemon Go I found during my break at work. Now I really shouldn't have found this shiny because I was literally 25 minutes into my 10 minute break. And then the next day might have been the worst day in my entire life because just watch this. No, 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 what? Not a shiny alpha gold huck. This is actually my worst nightmare. I am actually haunted. He keeps following me every video. For those who don't know me, I have got a shiny gold huck curse. I have unwillingly found over 45 shinies of him in Pokemon Violet. He keeps showing up in my videos uninvited and his shiny is absolutely horrible. I just can't get him away from me. And now he has the nerve to show up in his shiny alpha form? I'm going insane. This curse is actually real and I can't break it. So what will I do? Well, whilst he's here, I might as well save my game and use this opportunity to kill him over and over and over and over again to warn him to stay out of my life. I cannot believe that. But hey, I guess that gives us one of the three shiny alphas we need for the challenge. Thanks. <clears throat> With that out of the way, let's go back to rapid fire, shall we? The next day, I started my short-lived Vivalon series that I gave up on super quick because it just wasn't worth the time. And then after days of slowly hunting on Pokemon Sword, we finally got something new. That being a shiny Manetric. Then I filmed my shiny hunting every Squawkabilly short, spent two hours looking for a green Wingull, then a shiny Cacnea, a yellow Buizu and Legends Arceus, and day 54, I found a shiny Lechonk, which I wasn't even looking for, as I was trying to get B-roll footage for another video. Day 55 was pretty cool because it was day one of Pokemon Go Fest 2023. The yearly event where for eight hours, both days days of the weekend, the game will boost a bunch of specific Pokemon, with the shiny rates boosted to an estimated 1 in 64. In other words, really good. So I went to Kings Park, the iconic place to play Pokemon Go in Western Australia, and went absolutely ham with the shinies. So many amazing catches I didn't even have yet, and probably my favourite thing from today was Ferrisseed, because I absolutely love his blue shiny, as well as these Tiara Pikachu shinies that'll never come back once this event ends. Day 2 of GoFest was also crazy, because because the theme for the day was Mega Rayquaza raids, my favorite legendary and mega Pokemon. So I did literally every raid in sight, whilst also catching all the crazy spawns as we'd walk to the gyms. And I'm pretty sure by the end of the day, it was the most steps I have ever taken in a single day, hitting over 39,000 steps. Starting off the next week, I was losing my mind at how horribly my Dynamax Adventures shiny luck was. I spent all day doing 133 raids only to get a shiny in the wrong spot, this one being Grimmsnarl. Thankfully, the next two days I got the shiny super quickly, with a colossal one only my second raid, and then this awesome relicanth on the 36th the day after. But there went my luck again because it took another 164 raids before my next shiny, and it still wasn't even ho oh Just this lampen instead. Please, these hunts are getting ridiculously time consuming. Just give me that golden bird. Here's another update on what we've scored recently. Quite an insane collection we're building ourselves, and the only stat that's changed is we now have one shiny alpha court. I woke up the next morning to find our final Pokemon Sleep Shiny, and that would be a Haunter, which is pretty cool. And the next day was Charmander Community Day, for the third time for some reason. They do classic com days every now and then for people who may have missed the original, and the weather could not have matched the event any less, because it was actually raining. And you probably know that if Charmander's flame on his tail goes out, he dies. So I got saturated during my hunting, but luckily I found another huge Shiny. My com day luck is insane. For the next seven days, I stuck to Legends Arceus to try and get some more alpha shinies. And on the first day, I actually found something amazing in just four minutes. What the hell? Shiny Alpha Sligu. Whoa, that was... I just booted up the game. Not the craziest shiny in the world, but a shiny alpha is always cool to find. Unfortunately, the rest of the week was pretty lackluster, seeing as we scored all regular shinies, including Starly, Gligar, Hippopotas, Gumi, Shinx, and Staravia. And for whatever reason, I felt like doing another Let's Go hunt. Today, I went for Caterpie and Viridian Forest because he has an amazing yellow shiny. So I caught as many of these caterpillars as possible and was soon treated 
with a shiny Weedle? Damn, okay. This one was actually a 1 in 2048 spawn, seeing as I only had a lure on and no catch combo for it. I then went back to hunting Ho-Oh and was losing my mind at how much time was being wasted doing these raids over and over again, and found a pseudo Wudo after 135 and a blue Lycan Rock after 69 raids. And well, we're gonna have to take another break from that because the Teal Mask DLC for Scarlet and Violet releases today. I've been so hyped for this to drop and to finally have new Pokemon and scenery to hunt in. Day one was mainly spent doing the story and completing the Pokedex, but I did end up finding a shiny Chingling out of nowhere. An okay first shiny to find in Kitakami, but then the next day I started my 24 hour shiny hunting video for this DLC. Now I've explained this before, but my 24 hour shiny hunting videos are not done 24 hours straight. It's 24 hours of gameplay over the course of a couple of days. So the next few days are Pokemon you might have seen in that video, including and starting off with a beautiful Spinarak, an amazing Phantomp, a chubby Munchlax, and an authentic artisan version of Poltergeist. By day 78, I had finished hunting for that video, so I had a bunch of scripting and editing to do for the next week, meaning I stuck to the simple shiny hunting games, Legends Arceus and Pokemon Go. I ended up finding a shiny Parasect, a green Machop, and then a Hisuian Basculin, who didn't notice me this time, and I actually saved and caught it. We now only have 20 days to go. Here's another update of recent catches, and here's our overall progress. It's so satisfying seeing so many shinies. However, I still need to find a shiny in three unique games, get one more shiny alpha, and still need that shiny ho-oh. Otherwise, I've got a lot of shinies I need to give away. Next, we ended up finding a Starly, which isn't anything special, but the following day, I managed to find one of the best shiny mythicals in Pokemon Go. That being the vibrant red Genesect, that just looks amazing. And speaking of Pokemon Go, it was time for Grubbin Community Day. I absolutely love Grubbin and obviously managed to get a bunch of shinies, with one of them having extremely high stats. This is a 96 IV shiny, which is crazy good. And it was then time to start filming a new video, that being my Kitakami Shiny Dex video. The next four days consisted of a shiny Carbink, Grubbin, the beginning of my hunt for the female shiny Salandit, and a Nose Pass. And I obviously got more shinies in Kitakami over the week, but I want to show stuff no one has seen yet, such as this really good stat shiny Onyx I found near the beach, which is pretty awesome. The next day, I found a shiny Magikarp in the spot where it has a chance to be level 100 in the wild. And if you saw my previous video, you'll know I only got a level 44 shiny. However, we'd actually return to this hunt again soon, to have another crack at the wild level 100 shiny. For some reason, I played Legends Arceus the next day, and had a shiny Basculin spawn in the exact same spot as the last one I found. But this one also ran away before I could even hit the ground to save. Yep, that's another shiny fail to add to the books. We did eventually find a green Machoke soon after. Day 91 was the day I got super lucky and found a shiny Aracuda insanely quickly by accidentally bumping into one. And then, after what I'm pretty sure was at least 45 hours worth of hunting, I finally found my Dynamax Adventure target. <gasps> yes! Oh my god, we got the shiny ho -Oh! We finally got it! That looks awesome! Awesome! Oh my god! The hunt is over! 926 raids in, 12 shiny phases later, and we finally got this amazing golden chicken! I was so unbelievably hyped when I found this, because it was my first ever shiny legendary from Dynamax Adventures. So I decided to name him KFC, and we can finally tick the catch a shiny legendary goal off. And by now, we only had one week of daily shiny hunting remaining. And to prevent showing you shiny I found in my previous video, I wanted to continue trying to find that level 100 shiny Magikarp. The first shiny came in only 2 minutes and was level 68. The next day I didn't even get a golden fish, but a pink salamander instead, who is just unbelievably chill and so perfect. And I'm gonna be honest, I had absolutely no faith we were gonna find this overleveled car, but yet I was proven completely wrong. <gasps> what? <laughs> I, I was not expecting that. We got the level 100 shiny Magikarp. That is so cool. Is that my like third shiny Magikarp? That is actually insane. And the next day, I ended up finding two wild shiny coughing at the same time. So far, we had only shiny hunted in seven unique games. And considering I didn't have the time or energy to hunt in any older games at this point, I decided to take out my phone and re-download a game I haven't played since the beginning of high school. Magikarp Jump. 
Yep, I just can't keep my hands off this fish. And the reason I started playing this game is because one, you can own a shiny Magikarp, and two, it's apparently really easy to do so. All right, so after the intro to the game, and once you're able to pick a fishing rod to find a new Magikarp, basically you just choose one, watch the catching animation, and if this sweat icon shows up any less than three times, you quickly close the game and reopen it. This will allow you to pick another fishing rod, which I believe are completely randomized again after reloading the game. And repeat. So yeah, basically when three sweat icons show up, it will be shiny. And it actually took quite a while to find, even though the odds are like 6% or something really high. But it didn't matter, because we ticked off another unique game. The next day, I finally found the female shiny Salander I spent forever looking for. Check out my last video to see what that's all about. And with only two days remaining, I decided to get two more shinies in Kitakami that I didn't quite fit into part one of that shiny dex video. Then being a really cool Jangma-o and finally a little Gumi. And that's 100 days complete. Now don't go just yet because I'm about to lose a lot of shinies in a minute. So over the past 100 days, I caught a shiny Pokemon in every single one of them except for my birthday. Meaning I'll be surprised trading away a box of my shinies for that one day I missed. I also got a shiny in only 8 out of 10 unique games, caught 2 out of 3 shiny alphas, and thankfully I absolutely clutched it up for the final goal to find a shiny legendary. So that's 3 out of the 14 points for the goals incomplete. Meaning I'll be giving away 30 shinies to my subscribers, and in a few days I'll put up a post on my Twitter on how to enter the giveaway. Anyways, since I got a surprise trade so many shinies, I might as well get rid of all those male shiny Salandans I found last video. And damn, it is painful getting rid of so many shinies, but at least I could be making someone's day with them. The best things we got in return was a bunch of hacked shinies, including a Riolu, Chespin, and Scyther, as well as this one legit shiny Eevee. Anyways, this was such an amazingly fun challenge, and thank you all so much for watching.